Life before 2020, we thought that the world would be threatened by something this big. Instead, we got something this tiny that caused a global pandemic this big. Months or maybe years after this event, we would be adjusting based on the experiences we've had after. Hi, I'm Carlo and I'm an architect. And for more than 10 years in this profession, I have never dealt with a scenario much like a pandemic. Life after the pandemic will never be the same again. I will be featuring here some measures we design professionals can take to help reduce the risk of spreading viruses inside our homes. In this video, I will be talking about how architecture, interior design, and engineering can reduce the risk of COVID-19 and any other diseases. You see, in this field, we are prepared to design for calamity-resilient structures like typhoons, earthquakes, floods, just to name a few. But not a lot of us are prepared to handle an event like this, a pandemic. So while in quarantine, having a lot of time in my hands, I decided to develop my Post-Pandemic Architectural Adjustments to Residential Project Design Proposal or the PPAA RPDP. Disclaimer, the design concepts I will feature here are my proposals as an architecture professional. And from what I have observed during the pandemic, I believe that human civilization is at a turning point where life after the outbreak will never be the same as before. And that includes our homes, our workspaces, and basically the environment and the society we have been accustomed to. We as humans would have to adjust in order for us to comply with our basic human instinct, and that is to survive. So I have created a design that can be applied in a basic family dwelling in the post-pandemic era. The concepts and elements I will feature here can help to prevent the spread of any acquired virus like COVID-19. And some of it may have already been applied in your homes. So basically, I did the design for an average size lot in Metro Manila, which is around 4 meters wide and 15 meters deep. It is a single attached unit with firewalls on both sides for fire protection. The houses in the NCR are usually side by side of each other, with a setback of 5 meters from the sidewalk or the banqueta in local terms. This property is assigned with a single car parking slot located inside the property, which is where private parking slots should be, and not on the public streets which is public property by the way. The designs I will feature focuses more on the elements that I think we need to add if not yet added to our homes in order for it to be sort of like pandemic proof. Right off the gate, I placed a reversed window awning that can be turned into a ledge for food deliveries and possible relief goods drop off. This way, you eliminate the need for you to step out and remain inside the premises of your property. Now, as you walk inside the property, I placed a small wash basin with a working faucet so that you may be able to wash your hands or clean up before entering your house. Upon entering the main door, there's a foyer with a depressed flooring where you can remove your shoes before stepping onto the main floor of the house. This is a common practice in most Asian cultures like South Korea. In Japan, this is called Genkan, an area to remove your shoes and change into your house slippers. Also in this area, you can find a wall-mounted coat rack for your outdoor clothes to be hanged. This is a good feature to add to your house in order to prevent the dirt and dust from the outside coming in. Now going inside your house, the first area you would encounter is the kitchen. This is so you can drop your groceries or the food you bought outside easier. In this way, you can clean the packages or the bags that you use to store your groceries especially if you came from the wet market. Beside the kitchen is the toilet and bath. Similar to how typical condos are laid out, it is important that you get to completely clean yourself by showering before entering the common areas of the house. The basket near the door is a hamper for your dirty clothes. It is important for every house to have cross ventilation. I provided this house with a stack of open cement blocks to create a huge window. And on the opposite end of the hall is a wide clear glass swing door for passive ventilation. Passing by the common areas which are the dining and the living areas, you will find an outdoor garden where you can spend time getting some sun for a good dose of vitamin D. If you are not used to being in a confined space during quarantine and for the long hours of working from home, 
this garden can be a good place to chill out and get some fresh air. I purposely placed it at the back end of the property so that it can filter out the polluted air from the streets. Also, it is more quiet here. Speaking of working from home, another feature you can set up inside your house is your workstation or your home office. To help companies operate, some employees were fortunate enough to work from the comfort of their homes. A good home office should be enclosed with decent enough sound insulation, so a separate room should be ideal. If not, then another feature you can add in your house are wall dividers. This can serve as a partition so that you can be isolated for your home office. In some cases in the NCR, home quarantine was advised for those people who are suspected of acquiring the virus but are showing mild symptoms. Given that your house doesn't have any extra room to isolate yourself, a good tool in defining a barrier can be a foldable partition. It creates a boundary from the other inhabitants of your house, giving your family a bit of protection instead of having yourself fully exposed to a suspected patient. Another feature we can adapt in our homes is the use of skylights because exposure from direct sunlight can eliminate bacteria. And these are just some of my architectural design adjustments for residential houses. Now some of the spaces I've already mentioned here may already be a feature in your homes right now. You can just improve on it or make it even better than what I've proposed here. Although it may not seem too much, it can definitely help with a quarantine or lockdown type scenario where we are forced to stay at home. With what we have been through this 2020, it is always best to stay safe and prepared. The goal is to minimize the transmission of the virus while keeping our homes safe. But in the end, the spread of the virus can still be controlled through the necessary personal precautions like washing of hands, wearing a face mask, and social distancing. These are just additional precautions that can be applied in our homes in our fight against COVID-19 or any other virus there may be. Remember that what happens outside our house may be beyond our control, but what happens inside of it will definitely be under our jurisdiction. It is always better to be prepared. As humans, we have the ability to be resilient through hardships and trials and that includes pandemics we could either learn from our mistakes or just completely ignore it and restart the cycle until we finally learn our lesson but that would be just selfish as designers in architecture and interior design we explore the value of human spaces and the movements we conduct inside and around the space we are the most adaptive of species. I remember the saying of that well-renowned architect, Norman Foster. As an architect, you design for the present with awareness of the past for a future which is essentially unknown. Feel free to comment down below if you have any questions, suggestions, or any reaction. If you like this video, please share it to your friends and colleagues. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on that notification bell icon for more updates. Stay safe and I will see you or you will be seeing me rather on my next video.